Hello friends, welcome to the Legion Raid guide series featuring Thea Mine. This guide would not have been possible without the support of my community. They will all be listed at the back of this video on the credits. With that, let's get started right away. Thea Mine has 3 gates on normal, 4 gates on hard. They can be entered at 1610 and 1630 eye level. Gate 1 and 2 are fairly comfortable, but 3 and 4 are very difficult. Upon beating the gates, you receive dark fire, a material needed to transcend your armors. Auction items in the raid are a little bit different. It's basically a token item to retry your Transcend minigames. The first level is where the clear race is held. Eye level 1630 is the requirement, and you need to clear hard mold first. This is a 2 gate roster based raid with 1 time clear rewards. Gate 3 Theomine is a demon type boss with 300 HP bars with his sword being 40 bars. He has 3 phases and 1 crucial DPS check. You need time stop for progging and dark bombs to push DPS on certain patterns. I also recommend sacred bombs and charms too. Make sure to put in a purifying rune as well, you need it to cleanse blind. You will start the raid by approaching Theomine's sword from far away. Wait until the initial explosion starts, it's a bait for blind runners. Approach the sword based on where his hands are raised. When you arrive close enough, stay far enough to not get hit by his initial wave of explosions. Getting hit by any darkness attacks from Theomine will give you mortal wound debuff for 2 minutes. You receive 20% more damage from all attacks per stack, and every time you're hit, stack goes up and timer refreshes. The sword starts with a stagger check. Be aware that the second explosion will be around the sword. You need to stagger in time and deal as much damage as you can. Most groups tend to reach 35 to 28 bars. After the cutscene, he will always start with his signature teleport to Sword Wave. The Sword Wave can kill most DPS classes, and it gives Mortal Wound debuff. This pattern is scripted as a follow-up attack after summon Shadow Clone's mech. I want to go over some normal patterns here. Majority of his normal patterns are lethal, and you must focus on getting used to all of his normal patterns for a clear. His faces will be indicated on the top right as normal and enhanced as well. They are ranked and most important to memorize. Double slash the back grab. He will slash twice forward and teleport his sword behind him to grab someone. Then he will slam his left side. If you're not comfortable with this pattern, stay at head position the whole time to avoid the grab and slam at all costs. Riddle spin. He will spin his sword like a helicopter and proceed to riddle spin around him. Then he will smash the ground causing a wave going outwards very far. Move close to him as soon as the riddle spin animation finishes. Stomp. His stomp emits a dark wave. This blinds you and this pattern enhances later. Space far over or use skills with at least paralysis immune. If you're blinded, you can't see red telegraphs with hindered vision. Be sure to cleanse immediately. Draven. He will teleport away and spawn swords going across like sawmills. It will go across 7 times and each of these swords give lethal stacks. The blue telegraph has a point of intersection. He will teleport to someone afterwards for a vertical slam with a large energy wave across. Go behind them quickly. Clock inside, counter clock outside. He will spin his sword around him and explode. It is inside safe at clockwise and outside safe at counterclockwise. I recommend just staying close and DPS and use spacebar or tenacity skills regardless of what variation it is. Summon Swords There are two variations on Summon Swords and they are very easy to dodge. But it does give you lethal stacks though, so watch the red telegraphs. Energy Blast and Sword Throws Whenever he backsteps or face backwards, he will fire two types of energy blasts, also a large wave or he will simply throw his sword. They don't do a lot of damage, but the lasers do blind you. Sword Sawmill He will spin two of his swords around him. It is head safe the whole time. Entropy players should receive shields and DR to freely DPS at the back. Charge Smash He will float and aggro one person and charge up his sword. The red telegraphs don't give lethal stacks at all. The slam itself is back and close front safe. It looks scary, but it's a very important DPS pattern. Target player must keep his head still because his slam attack is very large. Stand right in front of him. Theomine's first time based pattern is summon dark clones. You will see this first. He will take a pose and start gathering dark energy. This animation is crucial to identify. Try to memorize it. When the orb explodes, two players on hard, one player on normal will receive a dark sword icon above their head that lasts 5 seconds. He will do a follow up teleport to blue slash attack with a down swing behind him or 270 degrees from where he's facing. He always spins counterclockwise. Never ever get hit by this at all costs. As for the shadow clones, if you place them too close to each other, they can turn into a larger one that does damage when people stand on them. Recommended dropping positions are the outskirts of the map. Distribute them without being out of battle for too long. 
the Shadow Clones will also fire its own White Sword energy every time Theomine does a blue slash attack again. They each deal separate damage with lethal stacks. If you're having trouble placing your shadows where you want, try to spacebar into your desired position when your debuff second has one second left. You will see Theomine's identity pattern afterwards. This is a new mechanic in Lost Ark. Theomine has an identity meter located on top left beside his HP bar. Every time this fills up to a certain amount, his red sword pattern will be queued up. The red sword pattern is an instant kill damage attack. This is why time stops and crisis evasion for supports is really good for proccing. There are 3 motions on normal, 4 on hard. There is also 2 phases, so there are 6 and 8 variations total. You need to memorize it all because his full identity meter red pattern has to be done blind. Red warning signs also do not appear if you're blinded too. Cubes. He will bring his sword out and let it float vertically. Then slash his left side in 2 big cube telegraphs. The enhanced version will have him take a crouching pose about to slash. The 2 big cube telegraphs will be at front of him. Both variations can be dodged behind them if stood close. Another attribute you can check to distinguish between the patterns is this pattern also has white energy effects. Pizza. He will float in the air and looks like he's about to strike down. This is a pizza shaped attack exploding twice. Safe spots from normal variations is the same for both hits but enhanced version will alternate safe positions. Utilize a head and back attack symbol. Draw a line from the dot and the end of the symbol. This can help you indicate where the safe spots can be, especially when you're blinded. Rings and cross. He will pull his sword out and let it float horizontally. Then he will create double ring red telegraphs. You have to step back a little. His effect indicates how far you need to stay away. Enhanced version will be plus position safe. Pac-Man. This motion appears at hard mode only. This pattern still kills so many people too. Theomine will take a tail guard position like in Kendo. Normal vision will slash behind them as a Pac-Man shape, then inside safe large ring. However, the enhanced version is outside safe on second hit. People get confused by recognizing the pattern too late or move too far away during the normal version to be killed from the second attack. If you cannot identify this initial motion fast enough, my tip is to memorize the lightning effect. He also emits different sound effects too. Remember both variations are head safe at first slash, which will give you a little bit more time to react on the second slash. All red patterns are normal until after destroying a sword after 255 bars, then enhanced until phase 2 to stage break. It will be mentioned at the top right throughout the whole video. First major mechanic starts at 275 bars. He will teleport to the center and start spinning his sword at the outer ring. He will proceed to do a model walk for 5 steps before going up in the air. When he goes up in the air, he will emit a ring of darkness. You must spacebar over this or you will get an uncleansable blindness for a long time. You won't be able to see the red telegraphs throughout the whole mechanic. Afterwards, he will do the pattern like Simon says on the safe spots. Each red line does massive damage with lethal stacks. There are 4 total variations. Sliding door. The warning signs will look like a sliding door from Theomine, then two safe spots or horizontal or vertical lines based on Theomine. The safe spots always alternate between vertical and horizontal. Wave to back. The warning signs will come in a wave from one edge to the other, then the edge at the end is the safe spot afterwards. Space bar over, then stay at the end of the edge. Edge to center. First safe spot will be an edge, second safe spot will also be an edge at counterclock, third will be a center from the second safe spot, and fourth will be the same as second safe spot. If you quickly recognize the first wave safe spot being on the edge, prepare to rotate counterclock. Third and fourth wave can be dodged at the second safe spot at the middle area. Center to edge. First safe spot will be on the center, second safe spot will be on edge, third safe spot will be on the other edge, and fourth safe spot will be on the center of that edge. If you see the safe spot as center, the second wave is always going to be on the edge. The third will always be clockwise edge, and the fourth safe spot is middle from that edge. On hard mode, one random person will also receive Dark Seed. When the timer runs out, it will explode and deal near death damage and knock out people. So they need to be away from the group. There are separate dodge spots for seats, but you can simply use time stop. It can last through two waves very easily. At 255 bars, he will float in place with reduced damage. He will fly away and spawn his sword in the middle. The sword will make an inside safe explosion and vacuum people inwards. This is where supports and gun lancers need to use their awakening and dark bombs need to be thrown. The sword will target one person and spawn three red pizza shaped telegraph from its body. Periodically, a blue pizza symbol will also target the aggro player and explode. Then the fourth one will be a semicircle. 
afterwards, the red pizza symbol will explode. It is very crucial for the aggro person to be stationary as possible. As for non-aggro people, ignore the red telegraphs because they explode last after blue semicircle. They're basically a hindrance to confuse you. If you're aggroed and accidentally get hit by the blue pizza to get knocked far off, you can actually safe fall far away outside to take darkness tick damage instead. Adding in a time stop will also make the pattern super stable the whole time. When the explosions are done, the sword will fly towards the aggro player. He should lead the sword to 9 o'clock position if possible. It's the easiest spot to fight it. If it isn't, you don't need to worry about it too much because you need to focus on pushing DPS. The sword's patterns are as follows. Uppercut, most dangerous pattern. The sword will always lay down first before the attack, scratch to an uppercut, then riddle spin. Always make sure to avoid this and supports need to give care if DPS players happen to get comboed. Wi-Fi. Sword will fly up in the air and there will be a Wi-Fi shaped telegraph. Impact also does damage so stay back first. Teleport to explosion. Sword will disappear and appear with an outside safe inside safe explosion. The second explosion radius is very big so make sure to spacebar inwards. Dark wave. The sword will shake and emit a dark wave to blind players. This is a good DPS pattern. Theomine in the middle will also periodically use patterns. In hard mode, as soon as the battle starts, sword tether will spawn and rotate slowly. The tether and sword itself does massive damage. Sometimes it bugs out too, and it spins weird. Summon clones. This will happen first. He will periodically spawn clones during the fight. Two on hard and one on normal. This is why the sword phase need to end quick to not have many shadows in the field. Laser and red sword. He will choose a target and shoot a laser or a red sword. They alternate in session. Aggroed player must kite the laser away just enough to return to the battle quickly. As for red sword, it explodes in a huge radius and it causes lethal stacks. Target must kite the sword away far enough from the fight. Dark wave. This blinds you if you don't spacebar over or use paralysis immune skills. This alternates with summon clones. At the start, Theomine in the middle will always use summon shadow clones in the beginning. Right after placing clones, he will then either laser or summon red sword. Then you have just about 8 seconds for the next set of Theomine's hindering attacks, which is dark wave to laser sword or red sword. This will repeat until the sword is destroyed. The sword will always do two normal patterns. Communicate and count them on your head. Afterwards, 80% of the time, the sword will always counter and the possibility of counter increases per additional normal pattern that he does. You must hit this counter because DPS push difference is really really big and missing them usually kills most people too. There are three variations of the counter. Teleport to counter. Sword will blink away and appear to counter. Notice the special effects. This is the easiest one. Counter to spin. This is the fastest one. Sword will face a player and spin to counter. If failed, you must run away due to its massive damage with numerous lethal stacks counter to dash. This will look like an uppercut. Sword will lay down and prepare to counter. If failed, the sword will dash up to 4 times leaving a residue. When the sword is countered, it will sometimes try to counter again. When it's successfully done, you will need to stagger it for longer damage windows. Make sure to throw your dark bomb here and damage all the way. This phase will feel chaotic at first, so make sure to help each other on identifying targeted players for the laser and the red sword. Place shadow clones properly. Your first hardship will be this phase during progging. My tip is to alternate focus on Theomine patterns every normal pattern of the sword. Use as many dark bombs here if needed because the faster the sword is pushed, less shadow clones there will be in the map. When the sword is destroyed, communicate with the team that Theomine is in enhanced mode. Keep an eye on the identity bar to prepare for the red pattern to appear as well. You will surely see it at least once or twice after the sword has been destroyed. Other than summon clones, there will be one more time based pattern here. Theomine will crouch and aggro someone, dash front and back to do slashes behind them like Virgil. Then he'll dash back to aggro someone else, dash front, and Virgil slash in front of him. These slashes may kill you off guard, so watch out. After the head Virgil slash, Theomine will dash back again and shoot many sword waves to the target. The aggro would need to keep on walking to kite the waves. This pattern is not a DPS time until the sword waves part. Here are some of the Theomine's normal patterns during the enhanced phase. Fear orbs. He will stand still and hold up a white orb. This orb will explode and spread across everywhere. This is extremely hard to dodge and causes a lot of accidents. People with time stop tend to tank the orbs to remove it completely from the start. After the orbs, he will teleport to a target and slash multiple times on front. Ground stab to wave. This pattern is very dangerous. He will charge up his sword and create wave of rings. His initial stab is an explosion along with the waves exploding afterwards. This can knock you out super far away. Tenacity skills are very very important 
and if you're worried, third ring is the safe spot. But you still need to dodge his follow up jump attack to grab. Dash back to stab. He will dash back and proceed to stab anyone in front of him. If anyone is caught, he will pierce the target and give explosion damage behind them, knocking you very far away. My tip is to never follow him on his head if he dashes back. Always move or spacebar sideways looking at his head position icons. Stomp. The darkness emitting stomp will follow up with a jump attack. Save your spacebar and tenacity skills here. DR and shielding is also really important. 180 slash. His sword will glow and back head indicator will disappear. He will slash 180 degrees at a wide range in front of him. This knocks you back very far if unlucky. He will dash back and start brandishing in front of him. Try to pre-position yourself for DPS opportunities. Alternating Explosion He will lift up his sword and stab the ground. The large red circle telegraphs alternate diagonally in safe positions. Getting hit by this explosion will also blind you. Stabbing Combo He will scrape anyone behind him and combo stab in front of him. This is a very free DPS pattern for back attackers. X Slash He will dash back and jump forward to create a large X-shaped explosion. If you see this, try to stay behind them for DPS opportunities. Shadow Pillars He will stab the sword on the ground, and 4 nearest players will spawn 8 Shadow Pillars under their feet. They need to kite them away so others deal DPS during this pattern. Getting hit by Pillars will also blind you. Valganus He will hold this sword up vertically close to him, and spawn 2 cone-shaped waves rotating clockwise. This is a DPS pattern and is very important for anyone to stay close so supports can give shield and DR to everyone. Slam Attack There are a few variations. He either slams front and back, sometimes he does a follow 180 or 270 slam as it is, and when he slams same spot twice, he teleports away to slam the same aggro again. At 225 lines, Theomine will teleport to the middle with Thyrain's dialogue. Theomine will emit a dark ring again. Make sure to spacebar through to see the red telegraphs. If your spacebar is on cooldown, stay far away from the boss to prioritize spacebarring through the dark wave first. There will be 4 rings cut into many pieces indicating safe spots. They will be deleted randomly in 3 waves. If sometimes unlucky, the whole side can have no safe spots. On hard mode, one person will also have the dark seed like back in 275 mechanic. Seed players need to be separated, so most parties tend to send the seed player at the top side while the rest find spots at bottom. My tip here is to wait at dead center. The time limit is around 12 seconds after Thyrene's dialogue. So use the boss timer to wait about 8 seconds, then proceed to move to a spot where there are more than 1 safe spots. Don't commit too far as well. When the timer runs out, Theomine will 360 slash the whole map. Anybody who is not at the safe spot will be dead. At under 210 lines, Theomine will teleport with the cutscene. He will spawn a sword meteor and proceed to ride his horse. This is the horse clash DPS check. Follow the horse's back the whole time. If you keep on following him, you will be rotating around the outskirts of the map. The horse will proceed to jump the other side and start a clash mechanic, a new mechanic in Lost Ark. One clash can be done per player, and it's a simple minigame like Osu, pressing skill buttons accordingly. Getting bad will kill you most of the time, and getting good will shorten the overall length of the clash, giving less DPS time. The clash spot is here at his back. You will need to press G to activate it. If failed, he will proceed to run away and do annoying patterns. I don't know if they will be at launch, but there are clash training sessions in Trixian. Make sure to try them out beforehand to learn various clash spots and the mech itself. Getting all perfects gives more time on DPS opportunity. You will need to Trixian parse Theomine with proper buffs applied with darks. The DPS check is very tight if clash minigames aren't all perfect either. Don't wait for the horse to appear, there is still a hitbox. When the first clash is over, Theomine will teleport to the middle and be stationary to spawn his army of shadow horses. Siderio Inanna is often used here to push DPS during this. The horses do damage through Inanna, so support awakening is mandatory here. Also, it is crucial to not rotate the head during this time to make sure entropy classes do efficient damage. Everyone should stay in front if you're not an entropy class. Afterwards, the boss will dash away and reappear from the outskirts of the map and slow down to take position. The next class position is right in front of him where he stops. Don't be confused at his head rotation because he will turn his head first before the clash. When the second clash is also successfully done, you will need to carve the rest of his shields out on time or it will be a raid wipe. Sometimes raid groups use Sidereal Way to progress further, but most parties with proper darks, buffs, and Trixian parse, you should be able to push through the DPS requirement. Phase 2 will start when you succeed the DPS check. From here, fall death is possible, so make sure to keep remembering those normal patterns in detail. Theomine will try clashing again every 45 to 50 seconds on the boss clock. He will teleport and the map will zoom out. 
he will choose one of the walls on the X-mark positions on the map to prepare for a clash. If you get bad judgment on the clash or miss, the yellow telegraph portion of the map will be destroyed. The third clasher will need to stand here and proceed to clash Theomine's attack. After more patterns, Theomine will teleport again to try breaking the stage again. It is unclashable this time, so you need to let the stage break. When the stage breaks in half, you will need to make sure to communicate that Theomine is back to normal mode, not enhanced. Keep in mind the dangerous knockback patterns I've mentioned in the beginning, and there is one more rare pattern. Windmill. Windmill has a high chance to appear when he is staying on the side of the stage for more than two normal patterns. There will be a red telegraph circle, and this is a unique telegraph. He will stab the sword and proceed to swing his sword in a large 360 ring, inside safe. Most people get killed by this, so you need to recognize the red telegraph and get in after the first hit. Also on a side note, during this stage break, Riddle Spin teleports to a player for a follow up attack. You must group up to the center to not disperse aggro. After experiencing one or two red patterns and shadow clone spawns, he will try to break the stage in half again. Players have the choice of taking the clash in this position or use hidden Sidereal Ninavi to block it. If you use Sidereal Ninavi, you can clash one more time before the stage break. And after that, if the stage breaks, you only get quarter of the stage. Your goal is to drop Theomine to 90 bars until Theomine breaks the last piece of the stage. You will also see Theomine charge up and energy in front of him, along with many targets and red telegraphs. Target players need to kite the square explosions away, and initial aggro of the energy ball should hold the head position until ignition. This is a good DPS time if controlled properly. When you reach 90 bars, Theomai will enter phase 3 with a fresh map. His patterns will be enhanced again, so make sure to communicate with the team to remind them. The first shadow clone will need to be stacked very far at the outskirts of the map. People usually put them at 1 o'clock position. This is because we are in a time limit. There are shadows creeping inwards from outside the map. And there is also one more pattern where Theomine will charge up his sword. He will teleport into a big vertical slash. You will need to group up together to not disperse aggro and dodge together. This is kill damage. Move or spacebar sideways or use time stop. At 50 bars, Theomine will teleport away and another cutscene will start. He will be doing the 225 bar mechanic again, but with a quick time button press. On hard mode, the minigame itself will be upside down and going from right to left. After that, all your controls are inverted. You will need to find the safe spot like 225 bar mechanic. When Theomine slashes the whole map again, you will be teleported to another dimension. Go to the center and fight your shadow clone while your controls are inverted. One major DPS skill is enough to kill the clone, and as for supports, easiest way to do is use your awakening here. In the future, when you have enough high level transcendence, which is the gear upgrade, the pants transcendence will kill the clones in one hit as long as you hit them. You can also knock them out of bounds because the outside fog damage will kill them. When you destroy your clone, you'll be teleported back. Keep doing DPS even if he's taking reduced damage. Theomite's first pattern will be an alternating explosion. The Shadow Cloud will spawn from the center of the map this time, and for hard mode, Ghost will spawn on top of your head in about 50 seconds at the fight. At close to 42 bars, Theomine will charge up and disappear. You will need to group up at 9 o'clock or any outskirts of the map to prepare for the last clash. After 3 shadows attack the group, he will appear behind the aggro player. The clash position is at his back. The last clasher will need to run over quickly and clash. If you haven't used Sidereal Way yet, you can use it at Clash or as soon as the ghosts spawn for extra insurance. As for ghosts, as long as you dodge the yellow telegraphs, they won't grab you and disappear. Since ghost spawns are timed, expect it to happen and focus dodging the yellow telegraphs. You will need to drop his HP to zero from this point, but the darkness from the map will creep outwards from the center, leaving a very small outer ring to fight. You cannot see red telegraphs behind these clouds either. It is going to be a very hard push. Here are some additional comments that is worth mentioning. Theomine Gate 3 is very difficult. So many of its normal patterns are lethal and require you to memorize them. This is where support shielding care is very important and utilization of darks is very very crucial. For example, stomp attacks during the enhanced phase. You must use DR skills to protect your DPS players and awakening skills at dangerous patterns like Virgil Slash. You also need to make sure to have buffs ready during clash mechanics too. Bad buff management and brand uptime results in failed DPS checks. DPS players will also need to maximize your spacebar and tenacity skills to minimize movement to deal as much DPS as you can during the fight. Any hits may cause fall death after phase 2. Utilize your sidereals freely, getting experience is the best. You can use Inanna to push the sword faster or way on horse DPS check to practice phase 2. People need to get used to the normal patterns to be able to clear gate 3. 
Lastly, in the future, there will be more guides per specific class and positions from the ones I play the most. They will be often done during my live stream to help you guys. Be sure to check it out and ask any time if you need additional help. With that, this concludes Gate 3 of Theomine. This raid becomes extremely difficult from Gate 3, not just the raid, but make sure to practice your DPS cycles in Trixian, practice Inferno modes if needed to improve your uptime. Be patient and you'll be able to beat it. Thanks everyone and good luck. Bye bye.